What's going on YouTube? So as you probably know, trucks are the dominant form of transportation here in the US. However, Honda's approach to trucks has always been a unique one. While that unique approach is still mostly there, for 2021, Honda is adding some more traditional elements to this updated Ridgeline, including tougher styling and enhanced capabilities. So with that being said, let's go ahead and see if this updated Ridgeline is the midsize truck you should buy. So Hondas typically do very light refreshes. However, this is not one of those refreshes where you wonder what happened. It's very obvious straight from the start because Hondas actually redesigned all the sheet metal from the A pillar forward. So you'll notice right from the start, we have a much tougher look for this Ridgeline. We have a new squared off grill. And you'll also notice up here on the hood, they have redesigned this to have power bulges. Again, just to make it look tougher and more rugged. Now, we also have the new HPD package on this specific example, and we'll go through all the things that this throws in, but one of those things is going to be this grill texture on the inside. It is a little bit different than the standard bars you get on all of the trim levels. Now, running across the top here, you'll either have gloss black or a uh, chrome trim. We have the gloss black, obviously, on this sport model. And that leads us into our headlights. Now for 2021, Honda is throwing in LED low beams as standard equipment on all of the models. However, the high beam is incandescent. And then as we move down, you have your separated turn signal. You also have LED fog lights, and these are gonna be standard on every single trim level. Now I should point out that HPD stands for Honda Performance Development, and that package is available on every single trim level, including the base sport trim that we have here. And the biggest, probably exterior change, are these really, really unique bronze colored alloy wheels. Um, you know, it won't be everyone's cup of tea, but definitely stands out from the other 18 inch alloys that you can get in various shades of gray or gloss black on the other trim levels. And I also want to mention one other thing the HPD adds, and that's these thick pieces of body cladding. Uh, that's kind of squared off around the wheel arches. It doesn't stand out too much on this black colored model, but it definitely stands out a lot more if you choose to have a uh, lighter body color. Now we'll move on up here to the mirrors. Uh, these are gonna be gloss black on the sport and the black edition models, body color on the others. And then if you choose anything except for the base model, you will have heating and blind spot monitoring. All right, now Honda just refreshed this for 21. So of course you're still gonna have the same unibody design with this fake crack here on the side as usual. And then as far as another design element that you might see that's new, this HPD branding on the side, similar to like a Toyota TRD branding, I think it really makes it look a little bit more rugged than it did before. Now let's talk about the rear design. This has changed a little bit for the refresh. So the main thing you're going to notice is going to be these dual exhaust outlets here in the bumper. That's new for 21 and your tow rating is going to remain the same at 5,000 pounds. Now as far as the rest of the design, we have HPD branding up top, sport branding. And then off to the side of that we have these partially LED tail lights. The, brakes, the brake light itself is LED, however the rest is going to be incandescent. And now let's go ahead and check out the tailgate. Now, if you're familiar with the Ridgeline, you know this tailgate area is really where a lot of innovation happens. Now, of course you can't open it the normal way using this right here. However, the cooler way to open it is of course off to the side. So just locate this little handle right here. And then that allows you to swing the tailgate out to the side to really kind of maximize whatever you need done uh, in this bed. Now, as far as the bed itself, Honda brags that this is the widest bed in the class, so you're going to have a very wide bed. You have a nice lining down here at the bottom if you can see through the snow. And then we're not done yet because Honda does have a really cool trunk system. So if you lift up on this, the floor actually will open up and reveal a 7.3 cubic foot trunk space. This is completely watertight, um, so you don't have to worry about your stuff getting wet back here, even though it is in the bed. You also have a spare tire below. Uh, off to the side of that. And it is also watertight, so you can actually use this as a cooler. 
Not done yet with all the features though. You can also get an audio system, but that's gonna be on the higher end Ridgelines. Playing some music for you. Now Honda added all of their safety systems as standard in 2020. Of course, this is gonna to continue to the 2021 Ridgeline. So that's gonna include forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, as well as auto high beam headlamps. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up the exterior design that has changed quite a bit with this refresh. Now let's go ahead and check out the cabin and see if that's any different, but be sure to hit that subscribe button before we do that. So on the 2021 Ridgeline, Honda does nicely include a smart entry system standard on all models, as well as remote start, which is particularly useful on a day like this. And then to get inside the truck, just put your hand behind the sensor and it will open up. All right, now taking a first glance inside of this cabin, um, you will notice there are definitely less changes to the interior than the exterior. Now, of course, I want to start off, as always, by talking about your interior material and color options. So only the base sport trim level, like you see here, comes with the cloth seating. All the rest of them will come with leather seating. And as far as your color choices, uh, Honda hasn't made that official to us yet, but what was offered last year were the options of black, gray, or beige, and I do expect that to continue this year. Now turning over here to your door trim, even if you have the cloth seating, you will still get leather across the armrest with the color contrast stitching detail, and it is soft touch here as well as along the top. With the sport trim, we have this textured silver trim, and then our front two windows are one touch auto up and down. Heading down here to your seats, you'll notice we have a manual adjusting seat that's just on this sport trim. The rest of them will come with a 10-way power adjusting seat. And then like I already mentioned, this is the cloth seating material. Uh, I definitely like the design of this and it's still a very comfortable seat. Now many mid-sized trucks kind of have uh, cheap feeling cabins, but that has never been the case with this Ridgeline. Uh, and for 2021, you will continue to find these same materials. So across your upper dashboard, even on this base trim, it is all gonna be finished in a soft touch plastic with a stitching detail up there at the top. As we move down lower, we have some more of this textured silver trim. And then as we get to the lowest areas, this is going to be hard touch plastic as you would expect, but everything does feel extremely rugged and very durable in that typical Honda way. Now to start up every version of the Ridgeline, put your foot on the brake and press the standard button. So after start up, the first thing you'll be greeted with is this gauge cluster. Um, it is the same as it was last year, so you've got some analog gauges on the sides and you have a 4.2 inch multifunction display in the middle. You have some buttons on the steering wheel where you can go between all your typical kinds of information and then you have your digital speed readout at the top. Now heading back here to the steering wheel, you have electric power assisted steering. You'll notice on this sport trim level the steering wheel itself is not leather wrapped but it is leather wrapped on all of the rest of the trim levels and then heating comes on the RTLE. As far as the wheel itself it is going to be manual tilt and telescope. All right so now let's go ahead and check out though the probably best part of this interior and that is the insane amount of cabin storage. So of course as you probably know this does share you know basically the cabin with the pilot so that allows it to keep the ton of interior space including this gigantic center console which goes like all the way down to the floor. It does have a nice rubber lining in it as well and you've got some uh, power connections. Then we'll get out our coupons Look at that. I mean, absolutely swallows it up. You can't do that in a home. Now, up in front of that, you got your two cup holders. You have another large area to stick your cell phone, some more connections, and then you even have a little storage shelf as well. Now, as far as your shifter is concerned, this is Honda's usual uh, electronic push button style shifter. So you just press the D for drive. You can press again to activate the sport mode. 
And surprisingly, we do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel. When you pull back on the trigger, that will take you into reverse. And I am happy to note that Honda includes this multi-angle backup camera with active trajectory across every single model, including this base model. And if you want front and rear parking sensors, that's going to require the top two trim levels. There is not an electronic parking brake. You have the traditional foot style. Now returning back over here, you'll notice we have a little blank switch. Uh, that's where heated seats would be included if you choose the RTL or above. And then above that, you will find the standard three zone automatic climate control. So you heard me right, three zones. Um, that's basically unheard of in a mid-sized pickup truck, but of course that's something they were able to preserve from the pilot. Obviously, operation is super simple, and if you press the rear button, that's where you can make the specific adjustments to the rear climate control. All right, and now that brings us up here to our audio system. So the audio systems themselves, that has not changed. Um, so what we have is a 215 watt seven speaker sound system as standard equipment, and then a eight speaker premium sound system for the upper two trim levels. However, what has changed Volume knob, uh, this is definitely a big deal for a lot of you guys. You had that finicky swipe style before, now we have the traditional volume knob. But let's go ahead and give this audio system a sample. Overall, sound quality is actually quite nice for the bass sound system. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our display. So this is the standard 8-inch display. Um, beyond the volume knob, nothing really has changed in this regard. So um, as we look around here, you'll notice this does still run the older style Honda Link system that it had last year. Uh, so you don't have the newest performance or the newest graphics and features on board. Uh, however, for the most part, it does cover all the things that you expect to have. Of course, one of those expected features is smartphone connectivity. So you do have standard Android Auto and standard Apple CarPlay on every single model. Uh, and then the upper and trim levels will come with a built-in navigation system. Now moving on up here, we do have a manual dimming mirror as you'd expect for the base sport model. However, all the rest of the trim levels come with an auto dimming one. And then surprisingly, we have three Homelink Universal remotes up here on the roof. And then speaking of the roof, you'll notice we do not have a moon roof, uh, but that's another feature that's included on all but this base sport. Now hopping in this Ridgeline's rear seat, there's not going to be anything different for this 2021 refresh. That said, this is still a really nice place to spend time since it's going to have 37 inches of rear legroom, 39 inches of rear headroom, which does place it above the Toyota Tacoma. And you can definitely feel that space benefit. With me sitting right here behind rear seat position, I have several inches of rear legroom and my feet can easily set it up underneath the seat. So this definitely has the pilot benefit back here in the second row. Now, as far as the features, you're gonna have vents standard on all of the models, and then dropping down, we have another hole down here, which I assume would maybe be outlets on the other models. And then if we fold down this center armrest, we have cup holders inside with a little storage cubby. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the features of this rear. Now, of course, like any pickup truck, you do need to be able to fold the seats up. So in order to do that, you just lift that handle, and as you can see, it does have a completely flat floor, which is really useful uh, for anything you need to haul back here. Maybe you need to throw a bicycle or something like that. It is completely flat. And if you also notice, it's on a like stand here. So even if the seat is folded down, you can st put stuff underneath of that. And in order to release, just pull the handle and fold it right back down into place. Now for your passenger seat here, it is gonna be manually adjusting as you would expect on this model. And then if we open up the glove box, it's not dampened. However, it is pretty good sized. Um, this is like the same glove box you're gonna find in a pilot. And obviously that's gonna be good for the coupon. So Honda gets an A plus for me on that. 
Then if we look up top, we have a gigantic sun visor. We do not have lights on this model, but we do have a mirror and you can also detach and extend. Just like that, we are up to 60 miles per hour. So as far as our engine situation, we have the same engine as last year. So that's gonna be Honda's three and a half liter V6 engine. It's making 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. Um, those are good power numbers. Uh, and you know, it really feels like it gets up to speed quite nicely. And the other thing that I do just want to mention about this engine is that it's really quite unique from the rest of the segment, as you'll see throughout this drive, is just the refinement overall. Now this uh, is shared with a lot of other Honda products, of course, and you know, that has its strong suits because if this is shared with the Honda Pilot, it has a really smooth and just refined feel that's not present in a lot of the stuff in the class like the Toyota Tacoma. And of course, it's also going to carry over for your ride quality. So with this Ridgeline, you're going to have exceptional ride quality. It's really no different than the Honda Pilot, um, which is certainly a good thing because you're having a lot of refinement. It really soaks up the bumps well and really no complaints there. No, it's, it's, it's no competition with uh, like the Tacoma and no. the Ranger. They just can't, with the body on frame, you just can't compete with the suspension tuning that this has you know you just it's so comfortable and that right there is going to be today's slam dunk is just the fact that even though this is a unibody crossover and that does have its drawbacks as i'm sure probably some of you guys are commenting right now in the comment section but it really has a lot of unique benefits in terms of the ride quality the refinement as well as other stuff like you know the, the unique features that this truck is able to offer so that was our auto start stop system starting back up. Definitely very smooth and refined. Now since Mason mentioned the slam dunk, I will mention the air ball for the day. Um, we decided we would have liked to see some more updates with this cabin, particularly the infotainment system. Um, <laughs> It's kind of a Honda thing, like they're very resistant to updating the infotainment systems of their vehicles after they've, you know, came out. Um, so even though they've long had a new version of the Honda Link system, we still have the old one for yet another model year in this Ridgeline. Yeah. Let me go ahead and get a sound level reading here now that we're at 55 miles per hour and we can see how quiet it is in here. And wow, we're going to be sitting at 56 and a half decibels, um, and it's pretty windy outside today. So that once again goes to show you that unique benefit of having this more uh, less trucky feel inside of the cabin because it's a lot, going to be a lot quieter than the competition. I do want to mention the transmission. Um, we've got a nine-speed automatic transmission that was added to the Ridgeline last year. Uh, as an update, this is a good transmission, nice and responsive, keeps the engine and its power band uh, well. Um, however, the bigger update that I want to mention is the fact that we have standard all-wheel drive on board for all of the trim levels. So you can no longer get a front-wheel drive ridgeline on the lower trim levels like you could last year. I'm sure that probably wasn't a popular option <laughs> anyways, but um, do be aware that because of that, that will raise the base price up a little bit um, from last year. I guess with that, we yeah. can go ahead and talk about the pricing. Yeah, of course. Um, so now you do have standard all-wheel drive, so the Sport's going to be $36,490. RTL is $39,470. RTLE, $42,420. And Black Edition is $43,920. Now, Honda typically doesn't do uh, options, but they do have this new HPD package available on all the trim levels for $2,800. This one has it, um, plus the 1175 destination brings this one to $40,465 with the sport trim level. So, at the end of the day, is this the midsize truck to buy? I 
think it's going to come down to your priorities. Um, you know, this is a good refresh, but fundamentally it doesn't change the fact that the Ridgeline, of course, is a unibody truck, and most of the other ones are body and frame, the traditional style truck. Um, so, you know, Honda takes a lot of flack for that, uh, but this really delivers so many unique elements that I think you really should ask yourself, does that really matter to you? Um, and I think one of the biggest obstacles previously to purchasing this was the fact that it looked exactly like the Pilot, and that's really been resolved with a lot tougher look on board as well. Um, so at the end of the day, I think this really is a good option, and I think that a lot more people should be paying attention to this and giving it consideration. Well guys, we really appreciate you watching one of the first in-depth looks at this refreshed 2021 Honda Ridgeline with the new HPV package. That's definitely not what it's called. What is it? H <laughs> HPD. HPD is it? <laughs> okay. We really appreciate you watching this video and if you made it this far, please hit that subscribe button down below because I know you enjoyed watching. So be sure to do that. It's completely free and there's going to be a lot more really cool content coming up soon so you won't want to miss out. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.